Hello everybody, so my name is Bruno Kornack, I'm working for HP as the uh, open source and, solution and, and Linux solution architect here. I'm part of a joint initiative between HP and Intel, based in Grenoble in France, and we are working for our customers to propose them solutions, so on my side, based on open source components. Uh, I'm here because I'm part of the Fossology project around the packaging of Fossology, so I'm, I'm not a contributor to the code itself, but I'm, I'm a contributor to the packaging infrastructure. And I know, I know the development team, so I serve, as, as Cedric said, as a proxy, in fact, between the OWT project and, and, uh, and the Fossology team when there is a need, uh, when, when we need to translate French to English, whatever. Uh, so what is Fossology? So Fossology comes from a very ancient Greek word, uh, which is Phos and Logos, you know, Logos means uh, science. Uh, so it's a study of Phos science around free and open source software. Um, how it has been defined, and there are many, many goals to, to the project. Uh, the goal is to create a set of tools and a framework in which you will be able to extend the set of tools that are provided by default, and the goal is to identify all the licenses which are present inside the software, not relying only on what the projects are mentioning on their website or inside their, their communication but also looking at every source code, every piece of software which is inside a project, finding all the occurrences of uh, references either to licenses or to copyright sentences, and reporting <coughs> all the stuff into a single interface so that user can really decide what all the licenses really use inside a project. So this is a, an analysis framework, and it works by scanning open source software. It analyzes the code, it saves the results in the database, so you can also operate on the database background if you want to create additional reports for your own, your own exploitation of the data. And uh, the reports are also, some reports are generated through web interface. Everything is managed through web interface and I will have some uh, screenshots in order to help you uh, understand how it's working. So Fossology is uh, part of the Linux Foundation initiative around open source compliance. So there are multiple activities. One is FOSS Bazaar. Among FOSS Bazaar you have the SPDX uh, interchange format and Fossology, one of the tools which is promoted as part of the, of the Linux Foundation uh, 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 compliance program. So what are we trying to do with the tool? The tool is aimed to solve uh, some governance problem around free and open source software such as license management, code plagiarism and vulnerability tracking, knowing that what has been really done up to now is license management. The others are possible through the fact that you can add agents to Fossology but are not yet inside the project. And when I will talk about the, the, the future plans around 2.0, uh, there may be a, a time, so after uh, the first quarter of 2012, where we can see some improvements around those two additional topics here. So how does it work? Uh, it's, as I said, it scan every single file into a delivery. So you get a software, you can get a tar file, you can add a package under your preferred distribution. So it could be a dev format, it could be an RPM format, it could be whatever. Uh, it could be an ISO image of a set of software. Everything is taken in account and, and as an entry, and it could be also a Windows compressed files, or it could be images. And it passes all the files in order to find references to licenses. We have a database of existing licenses, more than 400 node licenses inside the tool. And you can al also add your own licenses to the tool if you want. So if you have proprietary licenses or if you have unknown open source licenses that you would like to add to the tool so that you can detect them and, and report correctly the information, you can also add that. Um, it also detects something which is, will be an unknown license, and the, the tool which is used to do that is called NAMAS, and has been uh, GPL'd after the main core of Fossology, so it, it was a step two, in fact, in the release of Fossology, and this is a tool which has been used inside HP for the last 10 years in order to help us uh, ensure the compliance program that we have internally for our own developments. Uh, we, we use a lot of free software inside our own products, and in order to be in compliance with the licenses when we distribute those products to the outside, we wanted to have a very clear analysis of what we were delivering. 
and if we were in compliance with the licenses or not. So we had to develop all those tools set of pathologies. What you see now has been has been in infancy for, for the last 10 years inside HP. And it's now really a, I mean a production uh, tool for you to use. So the process flow is quite simple. You submit your software for analysis, you wait during the analysis, and you get the results. So the first is you have to submit the software into the batch queue. So there is a queuing system inside Phosology. You have uh, your first web interface. You can input here a link to the piece of software you want to analyze. There are some options that you can uh, add to it in order to browse through the, the interface more easily. And you can schedule a certain number of tasks that will be performed on the software. And you can imagine here that as we extend the number of agents that are able to um, do an action on the software which is passed, you can have more content here. You could do uh, code plagiarism here or, or binary analysis, which is not done, for example, right now. So you have a certain number of, here of possibilities, and the major one most customers and users are interested in, in is the license activity, so detecting license. Then you have to wait for analysis. So you submitted it in the queue, and there is a queue management. So you can query the queue. You can see uh, where your job is, in which status it is, what has been analyzed up to now. So it tries first, for example, to double get the software from the website in reference. And then it goes into the uh, first agent, which does uh, the license analysis. And then it runs a certain number of license analysis. So you have uh, the possibility to look at the queue, and that's quite convenient, especially if you imagine that you can put a full distribution inside the tool. And, and, and that's typically what we are doing internally. So we generally always pass every new Fedora, every new Debian uh, distribution completely. So it's, we, we push 20,000 packages inside the tool, and we, we have that uh, queue mechanism in order to, to be able to <coughs> know where we are, because it can take, take days to do the analysis. And then at the end, you can see the results of the analysis. So you push that piece of software, and you get that list of licenses. You know which number of files have been found matching these licenses. And each time, this is a best guess that the tool is trying to do, because of course there is no, it's just a tool. It's, uh, it's, it's there to help you find information on the, on the, on the code. But in any way, it's, it's a, a legal uh, person uh, putting a stamp on, on a paper. So you, you have to pass that tool to your legal department for them to analyze. And typically, what is interesting for them is to look at, could there be some incompatibilities between some licenses? Could there be some, list, some licenses listed here which are not part of the approved list that you have internally? Uh, and you say, OK, that license is, is a bad license for me. I don't want to, to use software which is using that license. Etc. Etc. And you can click on each of the license to see all the files, or you can see per subdirectory the number of licenses which are in fact used by all the components below that subdirectory. So, kudos to, to my to my uh, colleague Bob Gobey, who is using this picture to say, okay, in the past, how was problem? How were problems solved between people? It was through war. And today we have much more nice uh, ways of uh, dealing with problems between people, between companies, which is trial. You can go to court, and you can replace all the problems that people are seeing instead of making a, a war between the people. You can just look at the web, and you see a lot of references around uh, problems that have been detected in licenses in the past. And for us, it was very important. We don't want to be in that list of, of people appearing on websites saying HP has done bad stuff using uh, open source licenses. So uh, that's why we put in place that tool. And that's why we want to protect ourselves from appearing here uh, inside, the, inside this type of uh, list of uh, bad users of open source. So there is a, so there is a, uh, <laughs> Fossology is hosted by the Linux Foundation. As you have seen, it's a sub-project of the Fossil Bazaar project. As every project hosted by the Linux Foundation, it has known a certain number of problems due to the attack to the Linux Foundation recently. And the website was well, not available anymore, and Fossology was uh, no exception. Fossbazaar easier, SPD is easier, so all those pieces of information were just unavailable for a couple of uh, weeks. 
We have also wor worked a lot with the Oregon State University in order to host um, uh, a demo of phosology. And if you want to make tests and you don't want to deploy the software yourself, ask to the development team. They will create for you an account here, and you will be able to have access to the phosology instance in the university, upload your software, and make all the tests around the software. Um, what we planned was to make this instance, the repo of fossology.org, available publicly uh, in, in 2008, and we decided to not do it because we didn't want uh, that people could use fossology as a weapon against uh, open source software. So we prefer that uh, we know the people who are asking for an account on this uh, instance, and, and we know what they are doing with it, and in general, it's like security. We prefer to work before with a project. If we identify any problem with one license in a project, we prefer to work with a project up front, trying to solve the problem with a license, and publish a new version of the software fixing the license, exactly as we do on the, on the security side. So as I said, we have had a certain number of problems with the uh, Linux Foundation hosting. Uh, it has started again since uh, last week, or something like that. Yeah, it's back. Yeah. Uh, Fossology.org uh, is back. Uh, Fossbazaar as well. But not all the instances of Fossology.org are back. Typically, the demo repo is not back yet. Uh, the University of... Uh, uh, so we are migrating some of the content to the State University of Oregon. But there is one key person at the State University who left. So we now have another problem is to, to find a new university to work with because it seems uh, this one will, may not be the one we, we want to work uh, on the long run due to those, uh, those aspects. So you can find the software, the, the repository is available, commit uh, messages are now flowing on the mailing list again, the mailing list is back again, but not everything is there. And it will take a, another couple of weeks before we can have everything on back, back on again. <coughs> 